I have retired the Catherine Gaza. For the past year or so, the Catherine Gaza has been the great ship of my railjack experience, but I think it's about time with the Call of the Tempest Dry to do something just a little bit different. Here we are in Guyan Point with a completely different ship. Well, not a completely different ship, but somewhat different ship. So, we're gonna actually kill all these spiders right now in the normal way possible. This is obviously not like a terribly hilariously optimized type of match fashion. This is really just a demonstration of the full might of this brand new ship that we will continue to use. I'm actually going to burn through flow burn now. Like so. We're just going to actually ram every single ship and also move a bit faster for a few seconds. Now when we reach a cruise ship, everything is going to remain more or less the same. More or less. Alrighty, so here is our first cruise ship, there it is, using the advanced piloting skills, well not really using the advanced piloting skills at all because I was literally just moving forward, we were able to hit that cruise ship pretty damn easily. What you may have noticed is that some of the immediate stats of my ship are very very different. For example, I am now sporting a ship with way more shields. Used to be 1,500. Now it is own, now it's around 2,000. As well as that, my shields actually recharge really, really quickly. I can actually recharge all of my shields in about five seconds. So that's of course going to be really, really strong. Because I am using something like Fiery Phoenix, my shields are also tougher as well, so that's of course really, really good. And of course, in general, I am of course flying a lot faster, so that's also going to be very, very interesting to use in different kinds of missions, especially things like Sentient Anomaly missions. Those are going to be very, very useful. But otherwise, for the most part, the gameplay remains more or less the same until we receive some brand new... Uh, where, uh, mission types, I believe that will be coming with Call of Tempestari, so that's of course going to be very exciting. We'll see what they have to say during the dev stream coming soon, or after, if you happen to be watching this after the dev stream. We have one more cruise ship left. By the way, there appears to be a defensive nature when it comes to actually using the uh, munitions vortex. You can actually use the munitions vortex to capture the enemy fire from a cruise ship, which is entirely useful for defensive purposes. But generally speaking, I find that what you'll end up with is you'll also end up with your forward artillery getting caught by the good old fashioned munitions vortex, which could be not as useful. By the way, let's have a quick look at the ship from the outside as well. So, this is the brand new ship known as the Shield of Ire. Shield of Ire, of course, being a railjack that is now using more shields than usual, as well as Particle Ram and Fiery Phoenix at the same time, meaning that this ship is going to be a lot more hands-on when it comes to piloting in order to actually blow up enemy fighters. So that's, of course, going to be really, really good.
But of course, the big question is, what have I done to the ship when it comes to its internals? Have I done something to its integrated avionics or its components? Let's find out. Here we are in the dry dock with the shield of Aya, which of course is the new ship. So in terms of the components, they remain more or less the same, although I am sticking with Vida engines as opposed to Levan engines, just cause I feel like that extra movement speed without boosting is probably fine for the time being, especially since the boost changes are still as bad as they have always been since Railjack revisited. In terms of the armaments, they remain more or less the same and they are still about as swap and change as they have always been. So at some point I might actually use a Photor in the front, we'll just have to see. But in terms of the side guns, I think I'm going to stick with Z-Key Photors for now, simply because a lot of people seem to not like the idea of using something like an APOC when that weapon requires Leedy because it is a projectile weapon. Now the avionics did receive some changes, but not a whole lot. In terms of the battle avionics, for now I'm going to be using Munitions Vortex to counteract the balance of damage between the Particle Ram and the Fiery Phoenix. In the sense that the Particle Ram and Fiery Phoenix, they're not exactly the most offensively AoE weapons in the game. So Munitions Vortex is still really, really good for that kind of use. Otherwise, in terms of the tactical avionics, I'm sticking with Flowburn because I do love using Flowburn from time to time. If I remember that it even exists, I'm going to have to start practicing using Flowburn on a much more regular occasion because I really want to use something like this for that extra boost speed. We're also going to use a Scuffed Void Cloak. Now, you may be thinking, okay, why am I using a scuffed void cloak it's mainly because of the duration of void cloak itself a lot of times when i'm using a full void cloak i end up sitting there waiting for the void cloak to actually expire before i go ahead and use my ship again because a full void cloak is a whopping 50 seconds which of course is oftentimes way too long so for the time being i'm just going to use a scuffed void cloak and hopefully if a change comes to the tactical avionics a change to the Void Cloak where you can actually turn it off by itself would be really, really welcome. Otherwise, Battle Force remains there as well because Battle Force is really, really strong. The main difference now when it comes to my integrated avionics is that I've taken out something like Quick Lock and I believe Hyper Strike as well in favor of more shields. Because it turns out that when you have shields on your Railjack, you are completely immune from getting minor breaches. You can only get a minor breach if you happen to get hit in the hull, i.e. when your shields have been depleted. So right now I have 2,220 shields and they will recharge completely in five seconds. So that is of course gonna be really, really good. That is through the use of Maxima and Anode Cell as well. If you would like to play something like that, I would probably recommend it as well. So that's pretty much it. Really, really straightforward way to play a really powerful ship. It is a little bit different to the way the Catherine Gasser user work, but otherwise, for the most part, my skill basically means I don't have to use any bulkhead or hull even on an that jazz. Instead, I'm going to be relying more on shields just to make sure that I don't get hit by a minor breach. Outside of that though, those shields are going to be really, really good at just keeping the ship alive because they can regenerate really, really quickly. So let me know if you with all this in the comments below. Is this the kind of ship that you would like to pilot instead of a super duper tanky hull ship or would you rather just stick to the super tanky hull ship? It seems like the super tanky hull ship is still the meta, so I suspect most people are going to do that anyway. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Railjack action, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.